Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all viewers out there. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Yusna Liza Hamid. Today what we're going to do is we're going to discuss again on group consolidation and our focus today is to discuss on the uh, consolidation issue, consolidation adjustment regarding dividends and interest from subsidiary company. And these are the dividends and interests uh, that are declared by the subsidiary company out of the post acquisition profits. As an introduction, subsidiary company will normally provide, declare, and pay for its dividends on issued equity shares such as ordinary and preference shares, as well as also declaring and pay for the redeemable preference dividend and the venture interest. If the subsidiary company also has in issue redeemable preference shares and debentures. Um, the uh, payment on dividends on preference and ordinary shares represent an equity distribution. And therefore, should there be any declaration of dividends on ordinary and preference shares, it is actually an appropriation out of the current year's retained profit. So it will later be disclosed under the statement of changes in equity. And this is an equity distribution. The venture interest is actually a finance cost. So it has to be provided in the statement of profit or loss, even if the company is making loss. For the dividends on redeemable preference shares, there are also expenses similar to the debenture interest. It is also part of the finance cost, which also need to be provided by the subsidiary company. Both uh, redeemable preference shares and debentures, they are non-current liabilities. Therefore, provision for interest, expense, and dividends, if it is provided by the subsidiary company, that reflect the creation of a liability. The creation of a liability, which will be the interest or dividend payable in the subsidiary's book. So in the separate books of the subsidiary, this will be disclosed in the uh, current liability section of the statement of financial position should the subsidiary company declare or pay for that declare make a, a declaration for the dividend or provide for the dividend as well as the debenture interest and redeemable preference dividend on the other hand holding company as the shareholder or the parent company may invest in the subsidiary's company not just ordinary but it will also invest in preference shares depending on whether it needs to control further so acquisition of ordinary shares will give the rights to the ordinary dividends to the percentage acquired by the parent Whereas the acquisition of the preference shares will also allow holding company to receive dividends declared by the subsidiary company based on the percentage acquired. Therefore, holding company may record its portion or share of dividends and preference dividend receivable from the subsidiary company. And this is actually an income, either when it is declared or when it is received by the holding company on the other hand the uh, holding or parent company may have invested in redeemable preference shares and may also have invested in the loan stock or the ventures in the subsidiary company as such the holding company will receive its share of income from this redeemable preference dividend if the subsidiary company declared the dividend and also will have some share of interest, the venture interest, from the subsidiary company should the interest are being provided for. The portion of the interest and redeemable preference within receivable by the holding company, again similar to the uh, ordinary and preference within, it has to be recognized as an income by the holding company. The timing of recognition of this um, share of 
dividends or maybe the share of interest is an accounting policy. And therefore, interest or dividends receivable in the holding company if this holding company has recorded its share of interest or recorded its share of dividends receivable from the subsidiary company that will reflect a, re a creation of current asset. If the holding company have taken credits on its share of um, share of dividends and share of interest and this will create a current asset called interest or dividend receivable. If it's related to debenture, it will be interest on debenture. If it's related um, to the uh, dividend, there will be dividend receivable from either ordinary or preference dividend. But these are actually a current asset as a result of the income from the subsidiary. And this is an intercompany transaction. The income from subsidiary company is an intercompany transaction or intragroup transaction, and therefore it must be eliminated. It must be eliminated. That was also the same case for our previous situation, which is our subsidiary company itself, where should the subsidiary company declare dividend payable or provide for interest that reflects again that is an intercompany transaction. So the consolidation adjustment will depend on how this intra-group transaction of expense for the debenture interest and redeemable preference dividend and income have been uh, de dealt by both the holding and the subsidiary company. There will be three situations that will arise. You should refer to note 11.4, chapter 11, page 394, where there, these three situations are the first one. Both the subsidiary and holding companies have recorded the interest or dividends from the interest and dividends. So we'll go into detail on this first situation by working out an example. The second situation is that the uh, both the subsidiary and holding companies have not recorded the interest or dividend. They have not yet recorded the dividend or interest. Remember the first one, both have recorded the dividends and interest. Second one is that both have not recorded in their books. So the first one both have recorded. The third one is a situation where one party has recorded the interest which is the subsidiary company where you have this green uh, sentence here and however the uh, holding company has not taken credits for its share of interest or dividend receivable, meaning that the subsidy company have already provided for and it's a separate, separate financial statement, but the holding company has not taken credit for its share of interest. And therefore, during consolidation, we will see that this intra-group transaction of expense and income or, and also the appropriation of profits will need to be dealt by both holding company and also the subsidiary company. And this intra-group transaction will not be reported. Only the transaction related to the third parties, which is the non-controlling interest, as well as other parties will be reported in the consolidated financial statement. I will stop at this point. I will see you in the next video which will illustrate on the application and a work example on first situation and we will also proceed later in another video for the second and third situation.
with that i thank you for watching i'll see you when i will see you assalamu alaikum warahmatullah and have a good day